Well, this is our last week in Morro Bay. And we are checking something off of our list that's been on there since we got here. <laughs> and we just haven't done it. And I told Ryan, if we're gonna do it, we better do it. Do it before we're not here anymore. Yeah. We are gonna go hike the sand spit dunes today and go out and explore a mostly untouched beach. Hopefully. Is the hope. I think there are spots that people go down to, but they usually just go down from the parking lot and don't go out because it's a long stretch out to the breakwater. It's pretty good surfing, I think. So I think that's what a lot of people are doing out there. Yeah. I've always wanted to go out there. So we are gonna go today. Behind us, it's so misty looking. I know. It's already windy though. It's, it is already windy. It's a little breezy. So I'm glad we came out this morning and not later today because it got really windy last night. And cold. But it's windy and cold this morning too. So. This is nice though. This look. This is cool. Look at the dunes. Let's go. So far out here, we have seen two dead seals, a uh, dead sea otter, uh, some dead birds, and now whales just off the shore. They're and alive though. Those ones are alive. This is just such an isolated, rugged part of the beach that nobody comes out here to clean stuff up. So there's like debris from ships and uh, dead animals that are being eaten by vultures and all that stuff because there's barely any people out here which is actually really nice we just now can see the first person this whole time out here and there are whales just offshore because this is a really steep beach and it gets deep out there it's kind of cool i knew there had to be something like this that existed on the california coast that wasn't freezing like up by monterey and stuff and yes it is cold but it is we are pretty far south like this is an LA destination type place. So, it's kinda cool. We got some solid sand for a second. It's not like losing 30% of your energy to just pushing sand out of the way. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, too soon. pretty isolated out here. I don't know if you can hear me because of the wind. It is getting windy. Actually right here is not too bad. We're seeing whales right offshore because this beach goes, it's pretty steep. It's a pretty good whale watching spot. Uh, especially when um, whales are taking their young north because they keep them close to the shore. And where it's deep enough they come right in pretty close. It's pretty cool. But it looks like it might be just one or two because we keep seeing the spray from them coming up and uh, we pull out our phones to take video and they disappear for a while and then they show up again. Sometimes they're pretty close, like within a half a mile offshore. It's pretty cool. This is a, uh, this beach is pretty littered with driftwood and stuff. It's really neat and it's deceptive how far you travel. Like it's a hard workout 
walking through this sand because it gives way so easily. It doesn't compact very well. But we've gone probably two miles at this point. But it's so tough going through some of the sand that while we're walking, the only thing going through my head is I gotta walk back through this, back that way. So uh, right now it's not too bad. Um, but we, every now and then you find some compacted sand and you're like, wow, I can move really fast. And then you immediately sink in again. But it's kind of worth it because we've only seen one other person out here today. And now there's nobody. They just walked past us. They were bird watching or something. Kind of looked like he had a state parks emblem on his jacket, which would make sense because this is all protected. So I'm sure they have to come walk out here every now and then. But uh, other than that, it's just the two of us. For like the last mile and a half, there's been nobody. It's pretty cool. This whole stretch of the sand spit used to be kind of an island, if I remember reading properly. And the U.S. Army used it during World War II for amphibious beach training. So they would they had a base over in Morro Bay, or what is now Morro Bay, where the power plant is, and uh, they would do amphibious water landings out here. And they actually built a um, a pier that went across the bay out to the sand spit to do more training, so they could bring vehicles and personnel out here easier. And now. Uh, this is no longer an island. They filled in the gap down there, that Shark Cove or something like that. They built uh, a jetty that goes out to the rock because the rock used to be have water all the way around it. And now it is how it is. There are people talking about wanting to open back up the Shark's Cove. I can't remember what it's called. Shark something at the other end of the, the far end of the bay. Opening it back up because Morro Bay is prone to get silt deposits in there and U.S. Coast Guard holds this as one of the most dangerous ports or bays or channels, I guess, to navigate because it's so shallow in so many places and the channel's so small. So, it's really interesting. All these things I never knew. We've been walking for a little, like almost two hours, maybe a little less than that, and about three and a half miles, three and a quarter miles. And we're nearing the end of the sand spit. It's a weird view from over here. Strange. The beach has gotten much nicer to walk on. Every now and then you get into a spot that, like this that's really deep. But the last probably third of this has been not too bad. Yeah. Now we have to go back and do it all over Now we have again. to go all the way back. And the funny thing is, is like maybe when we're at the end, maybe a thousand feet from us is a parking lot. But it's separated from us by the channel coming in. So we gotta walk the three and a half miles all the way back. Oh well. <laughs> and I think because I don't do it very often, I'm gonna make a map and I'll put it up next of where we walked so you get an idea of where we went and why it's so secluded out here. Also, yeah. all of this, these are all sand dunes that separate the beach we are on from the beach on the other side, which is in Morro Bay, which is a harbor. And there aren't a bunch of people over here because legally you are not allowed to go over the top of the dunes because it's all state protected land for bird nesting. There are a few little trails here and there, but for the most part, people just don't come over. And you can see there's nobody out here. Ours are the only footprints out here. So, it's pretty cool. And we're coming up to the, the breakwater from the other side. It's funny, because we get all the way out here and I can start to see people on the other breakwater. 
It feels like you're so isolated for so long and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, parking lot and people. Yeah. And then all of a sudden signs of other people show up. How weird. There's also a giant emergency call box over there. Lots of footprints. Sitting out here on the breakwater, contemplating going back. <laughs> it's like four miles back on sand, which is like the worst thing to walk on. So I guess we better start doing it. Yep. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. Ugh. Off we go. Back the way we came. We're walking back. The tide is significantly lower than it was this morning. So we're probably another 30 or 40 feet down closer to the water than we were closer to the ocean than we were this morning. And the sand is so much better. Yeah. Walking back will definitely take less time. So far we've done about five and a half miles, maybe a little more than that. And still we've only seen a few people here and there. We're uh, just about seven and a half, seven and three quarters of a mile into it. <sighs> We're almost back, but we still have a little, we still have a ways to go. Yeah. Starting to get tired. It's getting later, like after lunch, and we didn't bring lunch. <coughs> and we're back to the part of the beach that you don't move very fast because it's deeper. But, yeah. but every step is getting us closer. But yeah, we're probably gonna finish around eight and a half miles yeah. when we're done with this. In sand. In sand. Eight and a half miles in sand. Which is my least favorite place to walk, usually. I like firm sand. I yeah. I don't like this kind. Firm sand is good. This kind of sand is terrible. We like snowshoes. for the slow trudge up the hill. It's really deep here. Deep and fine. Just like me. But hey, we're almost back. This is where we start heading up the hill. We've done, uh, according to my watch, 
just over eight miles, but I started it about a half a mile in. So eight and a half miles, not too shabby. Oh, so deep. Find places where people have already stuck their feet really deep, kind of helps. We're in snowshoe country. So we're finishing the day, or at least this part of our day, uh, probably eight and three quarters of a mile, probably pretty close to nine because I wasn't tracking the entire thing because I'd, I don't know, I just started it part way through. But had eight miles solid on unstable sand. Whew, that's a workout. But it was a good way to spend the afternoon or the morning because now it's afternoon and uh we actually found a beach in central california well i mean let's be honest we're pretty close to southern california that we saw maybe three people all day till we got back to where the parking lot is pretty awesome plus look at all this We were way out there. That walk made my feet hurt. Oh yeah. Didn't realize how much you rely on stable ground when you're walking. My toes are sore. Yeah. And my hips. Yeah. Right up here. It stabilizes. Yep. But still, it was good. Well, I made this beanie. Yes. Oh, oh, look at that. Color combo. Color combo. Parking lot. Yeah. 